and also behind me. And I don't know. He he figured it out, but I didn't didn't. Oh, get that'd be cool. Yeah, you should get him on. <laughs> we don't really get to hear from those guys often yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah. I think it's I think that's so important. And I feel like people. I I invested in acoustics before I invested in good monitors. I, yeah. I actually still have yet to invest in good monitors. That's on my to do list. But um, I just think acoustics is everything. You know what I mean? It's important. It's, it's how we're but I it. mean, if you're in a small room, you know, I, I think you sh- you should get a set of good monitors because you got to hear. Oh, I'm, it, I, I'm saving up. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you don't need anything crazy, you know. But um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm using the Focal Twin Sixes um, on a sub, and I have a pair of NS Tens, and I got a pair of Genelec 8030s, which are over there. Oh, wow. that I, I currently don't even have them hooked up. Um, nice. It's just the Focals. Are I, those just... Focals, they sound amazing. I've yeah. heard them. And, you know, I got them. I was working out yeah. of another studio, and I, I was doing a mix, and I, I wasn't really happy with it. And I, I was like, I spent all day, and I was like, this isn't really coming together. And I was like, I'm going to go home and, you know, start again tomorrow. So I left the studio. I put it on in the car because I always print it before I head out. And I was, list- I was driving, pulling it out of the driveway of the studio and listening to this. And I was like, this this mix sounds awesome. Like it's some of my best work. And uh, <laughs> it's because these monitors didn't hype anything up. And I was like sitting there actually working. And so the next day I, I bought a pair. I was like, I need those because <laughs> whatever they're showing me is how I need to hear it because and I've since gotten used to them, but I didn't really understand them when I was using them. And then I left the room and it translated so well. And it just, I don't know. It, it didn't have the vibe in the room. At, to me at that point, but listening to it in the car and everywhere else, is like, that actually really, that was fine. I wasn't off at all. I just didn't know those monitors. And so I yeah. bought them, and, and, which just might be a weird way of, weird reason to buy a set of monitors. But I was just really sounds- kind of blown away with <laughs> what they pulled out of me, you know? Yeah. No, it sounds super reasonable to me. And it's interesting that you say, because it doesn't, like, I feel like it's the opposite of the NS10 approach, right? Like, the NS10 approach is like, these sound really shitty, so let's, like, make sure that all the shittiness in like the two, three K area sounds better and it'll sound good and translate. And I feel like what you're talking about, the focals is like, actually it's just not hyped. Yeah. Yeah. Which is and, and very And the NS10s, I just, I had the wrong amp on them for a while. So there was like no bottom end anyway, mm. but I just listened to them really low and I would do my vocal rides with them, like super soft. That's the other thing too, is I do a lot of the automation at a really low level. Um, Cause you have less room to work with. And then that, that scales up on bigger monitors. Um, now I have a better amp on them, and they still don't—they don't sound great. You know, I really don't get why everybody hypes hypes up NS10s. I mean, they're, they're not like they're not the worst sounding speaker. If you want a bad reference, I wouldn't say get NS10s. Um, they, right. they are decent, yeah. but they're they, they are really accurate in that mid range area. Right. That's so interesting about the the automation. I'm assuming that because you're not using as much compression, you're probably automating a lot. I do automate a lot. You know, some more than some tracks more than others, but yeah, I think the key is doing it all at a low level because you have a you have like less dynamic range to work within, right? I mean, if you if you've got this low level signal, there's not much room between what you can and can't hear. And then if you're just listening loud, you'll hear everything super soft, super loud. Um, so I think the the key, at least for me, is to do it low level. I'll, I'll automate mm-hmm. some stuff loud too, but vocals, I'll make sure that everything's coming through at a low level. Um, and they're usually sitting pretty good because you'll right, hear like it, at a low level, you'll hear what's too loud or not loud enough, like instantly. Right. Yeah. That's like the trick is like you would bring down the mix and make sure that you still hear like the, the lead vocal over everything yeah. else. Yeah. Kick, snare, and vocal. That's kind of, that's kind of my <laughs> that's game. It. Yeah. Yeah. I would say kick, for me, it's like kick, bass, and, and vocal. <laughs> oh, okay. Bass is tough to get, get on quiet yeah. stuff. It, yeah. On quiet, you can't really do. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's for sure. Um, so tell me a bit more about, I guess, monitoring in in general. Like, so are you referencing tracks while you're mixing? No. I know you said you barely listen to the rough mix. Yeah. Nothing, never. I I don't, I don't. I, number one, it's different now that everything is streaming and you don't have a song in iTunes you can just pull in. Uh, And I don't know what I have to do, record Spotify back. It's, It's too much work just to get, to be able to AB. I mean, sometimes I'll jump over Spotify and hear, if the artist is like, we want to go in this direction, like I'll obviously listen to it, but I'm never a being my mix to a totally different artist. I mean, it's bad enough, I think, when they want the sound that another artist has done. 
not because that's inherently bad, but because every time I get a reference, like, oh, we're going in this direction, it's like apples and oranges. Like the, the songs couldn't be more different. And so I always had to dissect, well, what do they like about that reference song? Is it the bottom end? Is it the way the vocals are treated? And that always, you can't just do that on another song. It doesn't always work. It works in their in the song that they like because that's the song that they like, but it's not going to necessarily work for their song. So it, it becomes an endless thing chasing that sound that isn't there's it, you have different information. So I, I don't get yeah. too hung up on that. Um, but I, if they want me to check out, you know, a reference song, I'll do it. I mean, it's, of course, I got to kind of hear where they want to go with it. But you know, my mix. It's also. I play that game late at night at home, laying on the floor, listening to music, like listen to my mixes, listen to some other guys' mixes. And it's like, oh man, I don't, I'm terrible. You know, like it makes you really, <laughs> <laughs> it makes me really, it, I, I sometimes have to, turn, I have to turn it off. It just gets me so discouraged, which is like a weird thing. I don't know. I get so in my head about it. Um, right. I, well, I, your mixes do sound really good. Well, thank so you. Just, I, mean, I, yeah. I like my mix. I think my mixes sound great. I, I always think, you know, the latest song I did is the best. You know, I'm always trying to, right. you know, push that gold standard, that gold reference. But yeah, sometimes listening to other mixes is like, man, what are they? But they've been given different information, you know? So it's a different artist, different song. And yeah, I feel like that's a really important, that's actually a really important point because. I feel like people get hung up and I know I like, just like you're saying, like get hung up by like, Oh, I'm not as good as this. It's not the same as that, but it's, it can't be the same as that. If it's not the same, it's song, not, it it's never not will the be the same, not I the never, same yeah. artist. It's not the same. Like given that information, you yeah. might be able to achieve pretty close to the same thing. You know, I mean, you have to exactly. listen to what some of these other guys are doing. You got to know what music should be sounding like and know what's right. good. You have to and understand the ballpark. You have to understand like right. what, like the radio station's going to play, you know, one after, you know what I mean? Like, that's like what people say, like, can this song be played after the previous song that you heard right. on the radio and, and stand up in terms of like, I don't know, general uh, esoteric quality, but right. But it's, but it's not the same song. No. And it's so subjective too. I know. I mean, I, I've sent mixes back and they're like, oh, the vocals just like really, the vocals kind of bright or the vocals pretty dull. You want it warmer. And then like, okay. And you wanted me to reference this song where the, those vocals are like, they hurt my ears. Like they're so bright. Like what, where's the line here? Like it's, yeah, it gets confusing. So that's one reason why I just kind of go with what they gave me, go with that song and let it lead. Cause it's not going to be with their references. Right. And we'd be able to generally get the bottom end there or get like the vocal feel there. A lot of times it is the feel that they're after than the sonics, but again, it's different information. You right. can't just make that happen. So do you have like, I guess, conversations with the artists you work with like in advance to kind of really go over all this stuff? Is it done over email? How does that communication It's not of- really, yeah, they're really, it's weird. I probably should have more of a conversation about it, but a lot of times they, they send it and here's the rough and here's the tracks and can't wait to hear what you do with it. And, and we just kind of leave it at that. But then on the flip side of that, when I send the mix out, it's not like, all right, here's the mix. I'm done. Let me know what you think. It's here's where I'm at. Let me know what you think and we'll go from there. Yeah. Which is a big difference. I think a lot of guys will send right. out a mix and then when they get notes back, they're like, oh, but they're undoing everything I did. And and it's not, I mean, it, it's still their song and you have to get them in on that conversation. And if they're not going to be in the room at the end of the day, you have to be willing to send it out and get their input. I mean, they got to give you their input back. For so sure. I never send out a finished mix. I mean, I can argue that none of them are ever finished. But when, <laughs> but when I send it out, it's yeah, it's just to loop them in and get their input. Here's where I'm at, you know. Let's let's dial it in now. Yeah, I feel like there's two approaches, and I, I'm with you on the. I always send it like, hey, this is where I'm at. What do you think of this vibe? Because I really want to include the artist in the mixing process in terms of like, you know, at the end of the day, it's their baby, it's their song, right? right. And there are, there are some people that say like, no, this is the best I'm going to do. You know, I had, a, I had a guest on the show named Justin Long who works out of Barefoot. And he said, my first mix is a product. After that, it's a service, you know? it's oh, interesting. And I, and I feel that. I totally yeah. I dig it, but it's not for me. Like yeah. for me, it's like I got to be incommunicado the whole time with, yeah. the, with the artist. I mean, if they want to have a conversation up front about what they want to do with it, I'll have it. But 
you know, a lot of times we're talking about stuff I haven't even looked under the hood yet, you know? I, can yeah. the drums sound the way you're saying you want them to sound? Like, how did you record them, you know? Like, now, that's a great analogy. How, good, is, how good are your vocals? Under the hood. Yeah. Yeah, you got to pull it up and look at everything. I mean, because sometimes that rough mix sounds the way it does because they did a lot to those tracks. Like, those tracks were not, they weren't recorded the way that they want them to really sound. And so they had to do a lot to get that rough mix. And then when I get the tracks, it's going to take a lot to get it back to even that rough mix. So at that point, I'll have them send stems over. Because mm. if you've got three different drum kits from version one, two, and three of the song playing at once, and I'm supposed to line that up the way you had it in your rough, like, you know, I don't know. Or, or if you've pitched up the vocals because you changed the key, you know, n- nothing I, I can do to get rid of those artifacts. So if you've put all these multi bands and distortions on it, you got to send me that because it'll take me a day to just iron that out. Um, I think the biggest thing right. that like young producers mix is just recording with intent, you know, like I should be able to pull up the faders and have pretty close to the rough mix, you know, I think. And a lot of times that happens, but there's times where, you know, they're just, they're doing a lot of heavy lifting on their end to get these, to try to squeeze some kind of vibe out of a song. And it's, it's endless yeah. chasing that. That's so interesting. I feel like a lot of that is because, um, you know, artists, I mean, f- I mean, y- 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 that, the reason why you mix, right? Mixing is so much fun. Like you already have yeah. the material in front of you. Let's just play with it and see what we can do with right. it. And I know like when I started recording, I was more interested in like, let's play with it now that I've recorded it than actually getting a good recording. So I feel yeah. like that might be the source of it. Like people are like, oh, let's have fun with this. And like, let's just yeah. dive into like, which is fine. Mixing. There's something to be said for that. Like if, if you want to take a, a sound and distort it and mess with it and tweak it and make it sound crazy, like do that. But then also, you know, but now it print that, commit that. That's that's your that's the sound you're going for. Don't give me like, you know, the yeah. drop of water in the bucket and, and expect me to get it to sound like an alien voice, like the way you did. Like yeah. you gotta you gotta make that happen on your end and, and commit that. Like if that's the sound you're after. Yeah. I actually heard that, um, you know, some of the top guys like Manny Marikin, like they pretty much ask for, you know, vocal stems wet. Like they want, yeah, they want how the rough mix sounds both. in terms of like, interesting. Yeah. I always tell them like, you know, send me the vocals wet, you know, and then send it dry. And especially with tuning, like uh, I can tune your vocals, but that's going to be a whole day of back and forth because you know how you want your vocals to sound. I might go too far or not enough tuning on that. So Vocals are always dry with tuning, and then they'll send it wet with their effects. If they want. If they want me to go nuts with it, I'll do that. But, yeah, usually we'll get both. And I always tell them, like, if in doubt, they send me both. Send me a dry, send me wet, and I can pick and choose. Nice. Do you have to, Do you actually charge more when you do more, like, when you get more types of, of files? No. I, I charge by the song. So if it's 10 tracks, if it's 100 tracks, you know. It's all um, the same. It's all the same. Because you're yeah. not really paying for the time of me going through. If you're paying for the time, I mean, you know, I don't know. No, no, for sure not. Yeah. I mean, you're paying for the, the song. You're paying for my taste, my input, my instincts on it. Right. You know? I guess I'm just saying, like, if you're doing extra technical bits, that 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 makes just, like, the song a lot more. It's not like you're just jumping into the mix right away. You've got a lot of prep work to do before you even get get into like the actual mixing of it, you know. There's enough prep work to do. Yeah, like I'm not like I said I really would prefer <laughs> not to tune work. your vocals, you know. So yeah. and and I I mean I don't. Like I just never been a case where I had to tune somebody's vocals. They always take care of that. Um you know, and that's part of an early conversation too is laying out, you know, how to prep a song for mixing, you know. If they have a session, I'll just take the session sometimes and work with that if that's easier. Um, yeah, I think I think uh, Dwarf and the Poet, they have a song coming out this week. Um, and they sent me their session, and I just worked off of that. But sometimes that's even more confusing because now I have to figure out their routing. And oh, my God. How, you know, it's, I, working on someone yeah. else's template is way more time-consuming than building yes. my own. Oh, my you know? God. Yeah. I've actually had a lot of guys kind of come to me asking me to kind of like take it from there. You know, like I work in logic. So someone who works in logic will be like, okay, take my, take my project over for me. And like, but it's like, 
and you know maybe give me a better price even because like you know i, oh, yeah. I have it all like halfway there yeah, but, but you it, don't I, it always ends up it ends up being worse because i end up like just having to like reconfigure everything to 